In this lesson, we will discuss electrical symbols that's used in HVAC systems and the special type of symbols we use to give clarity to pictures. So, it, when you're dealing with symbols, we have many different types of symbols to give some type of representation of a component, but more than that, to give logic to a electrical diagram. In a circuit, I'm going to draw a few different symbols that we will see and how you will recognize that switch. This will be a thermostat. This is a pressure control. It looks like a thermostat, but it will have like a half circle. Pressure control. This would be a float control, full circle. This will be a cell switch, air movement would cause it to uh, open or close. Time delay. Other components you may find, we're dealing with motors or solenoids or other type of uh, consuming devices. These are switches that open and closes based on uh, what it's used for. But a electrical coil or solenoid coil would look like that. Sometimes it would be drawing like this. Or we may find a motor. It may be drawn just as a circle and it would be abbreviated what it's used for. Indoor blower motor. IBM. If it's a condenser fan motor, be a circle, condenser, fan, motor. It was a compressor, COMP -C for compressor. So no matter what, just be a circle with the information written in or abbreviated to give the uh, technician the understanding of what the part is used for. Other things you find, these are switches, these are loads. Any other loads, such as a light bulb. A light bulb may be drawn to a circle also and do that. And they may put a letter inside of it to denote the color of the bulb. So R for red, if it's green, it might be a G, if it's yellow, a Y. Yeah, so blue might be BL. So they would give you different types of letters to, to give you the name. Uh, the type of light bulb it is, or color of the light bulb. Other type of uh, switches that you find when we're dealing with switches for contactors or relays. We will show symbol of a switch. A straight line, a gate basically, two contact points. Input, output. This is closed. A open switch will be drawn like this. This is closed. This is open. The same switch in two different positions. Another way they can draw this is this is set up contacts for a contactor or a relay. 
be drawn like this for a normally closed set of contacts. And this will be open set of contacts. Close with a diagonal line through the contact point and is left open when the contact is open. So I'm showing you two different ways to draw a switch. This is for a switch, this is more for a contact. Contacts are found in relays and contactors. A couple other symbols. Relays come in multiple configurations. It can be a relay we call a a little bit different. Single pole, single throw. One pole coming in, one power source coming in, has one action. It opens or it closes. Single pole, be a single pole, double throw. This switch can have two different positions. This switch, the position is now, is normally closed, abbreviated in C, and this will be normally open. Single pole, one power source coming in, two different actions. It could be in a normally closed position or it could change to a normally open position. It cannot be in both at the same time. This is another way to draw a special type of switch. They make many different configurations. Here's another one. And I'm going to show you what a different set of contacts. Instead of using a switch, we're going to use contacts. Same thing. This is a single pole, single throw. Single pole, double throw. One open, one close. Another thing, like I said, there could be many different ways. It could be a double pole, double throw, double pole, single throw, but it's unlimited what a manufacturer may build to uh, have uh, contact to do certain type of jobs. So this is symbols that give us the information of how uh, this action, the action of switches and how it will open. So then again, this is normally closed. This is normally open. Okay. So, give me a little more information. Let's build a couple of circuits. Some very basic circuits. To give you information how you would look at a schematic. We're going to do a line diagram or a schematic. Two power sources. Hot and a neutral. We'll abbreviate it. Contact points. We write down the voltage. Now we're going to put a symbol. Let's say we got contacts for a contactor. We have a compressor. Another set of contacts. We're going to put a contact point showing that it is actually physically connected to that hot leg and the neutral leg. Let's say we're going to tie off contact point again to a condenser fan motor. So it's in parallel with the compressor. When the compressor closes, the condenser fan motor will run all
also. Let's put a couple other controls. Let's say we put a transformer in. Simple for a transformer. Air co core. It's a step down transformer. From 120 volts down to 24 volts. It's a transformer. And this is the symbol. We're showing both the primary and the secondary coil of a transformer. So, then we're going to need a thermostat or the sub base of a thermostat. Sub base. Of the thermostat. This is a T stat. And we have a contactor coil from the symbol we talked about before. But add another symbol, another relay coil. Let's call this the indoor lower motor relay coil. Now when you look at this, we built the circuit with symbols. 120 volts, contacts, compressor, condenser fan motor, transformer, sub-base for a thermostat, and we have contactor coils and a relay coil for the, uh, the relay. These are different symbols that you would find in a circuit to, um, to realize how it will work and to discover the operation, the sequence of co uh, HVAC equipment. So we look at this and we understanding that we have to have symbols to determine how a system would operate and how it would run. So this is critical to understanding parts and understanding uh, these com parts and components and how they function within a HVC system.